Hi friends, welcome back again to this class. And today we shall deal with another topic that is non-conventional sources of energy. So previously we studied about six conventional sources of energy like firewood, uh, petroleum, natural gas, coal, hydroelectricity, all that. Now we shall see about non-conventional resources. That means not very commonly used. We cannot simply use it. For example, solar. If you want to use solar, we need a certain technology. We need that solar panel. We need the storage battery, all this. So it is not very commonly used. Nowadays people started using. But in the normal places, it is not that easy to get it. So let us see about those things. So non-conventional sources of energy. You can take your textbook, page number 33. The increasing use of fossil fuels is leading to its shortage. So the other class we said, the more we use, the faster it is getting over. Because to form the fossil fuel, we need millions of years. It cannot produce within one year. So it needs millions of years. And so it is running short. It is estimated that if the present rate of consumption continues, the reserves of these fuel will be exhausted. Moreover, their use also causes environmental pollution. Therefore, there is need for using non-conventional sources of energy such as solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy which are renewable. So these energies like solar, wind and tidal, they will never get over. We can use the same thing again and again. Wind will never get over, solar will never get over or tidal that means the power from the tide. So every, always there is tide in the sea, in the ocean, high tide and low tide you must have heard about it. So from that tide also we can generate power. So these are the things that are there always to never get over. If you shift to use of these sources of energy like solar, wind and tidal then we can continue to use the energy for a longer time. So first let us see about solar energy. You are all familiar with solar energy. Most of your houses will have solar panels to get power and so especially the villages where the electricity has no reach, most of them are depending on the solar energy. So sun's heat and light energy can be felt by very by every day. Solar energy is trapped from sun and can be used in solar cells to produce electricity. So solar panels are used for collecting sun's energy and it is stored in the solar cells in the battery. Many of these cells are joined into solar panels to generate power for heating and lighting purpose. The technology of utilizing solar energy benefits a lot of tropical countries, tropical countries that are blessed with abundant sunshine. And solar energy is also used in solar heaters, solar cookers, solar dryers, besides being used for community lighting and traffic signals. So these days solar purpose, solar light is used for different purposes and that is more convenient for the people. So it is used for cooking at home or lighting system or for drying things. So many purposes the solar energy is used. And before that now let us see about a chart the different types of non-conventional sources of energy are there given there the advantages and disadvantages are given in a short summarized way in a chart just let us go through that and see so first let us see about wind energy so wind energy is non-polluting then low cost production of electricity once set up so once this windmill is set up the cost of producing electricity is very less 
and safe and clean and the energy that comes from the wind is very safe there is no danger and it is very clean it does not cause pollution then what are the disadvantages so we said about three advantages but there are also disadvantages one thing is noise pollution so when this wind machine wind fans or wind mills are running it makes lot of noise so that way noise pollution is there so if nearby people are living there means it creates lot of disturbance for the people then wind mills costly to set up so we said once it is set up very easy no more expense but it is very costly at the time of setting up to buy all these parts and machines it is very expensive then disturbs radio and tv reception so if this wind mills are running then nearby radio station tv tv station and so they will not get proper signal their signals will be disturbed by this functioning of the wind mills so wind mills should be set up far away where people are not there and where there by nearby no radio station no tv station and so on then only it will be comfortable and it is harmful to birds and where the wind mills are kept it is harmful to the birds so maybe the birds will come and hit on this and die so many birds used to die by hitting this wind mills so these are about wind mills and their advantages and disadvantages then solar energy what we have just said now so advantages are inexhaustible it will never get over it is inexhaustible then just as the wind energy it is also non polluting then the disadvantages what are the disadvantages it is expensive just like setting up the wind mill is expensive setting up the solar panels and buying the battery everything is very expensive the diffuse the source so gets wasted so suppose the electricity the electricity that is produced from the solar energy if you don't use then it gets wasted so whatever is produced we have to use it otherwise it gets wasted that is about solar energy now tidal energy taking the power from the uh, from the sea from the tidal waves advantage is non polluting so all these energies are non polluting then inexhaustible it also does not end it is going on we can use for all the time then the disadvantage is destroys wildlife habitat so if you set up this hydro energy power station the water level will come up like a dam only right? then it will destroy the forest and the animals that are living there their houses their habitat will be destroyed then difficult to harness so it is very difficult to collect the power from the tidals so we need lot of technology modern technology lot of equipments are required in order to be successful in harvesting or harnessing the tidal energy so these are non conventional sources of energy then some more are there nuclear energy that is more powerful nuclear energy and advantage is emits large amount of energy so if you are able to get this nuclear energy we get plenty amount a large amount of power energy but advantage disadvantage is generates radioactive waste so when we produce nuclear energy there is also lot of radioactive are there and also it is very expensive so nuclear energy in order to get energy from the nuclear atoms we need to spend lot of money or we need to spend lot of other source of energy in order to extract energy from this nuclear atom so it is very expensive then biogas another source of energy is biogas it is low cost so it does not cost much then easy to operate operation also is very easy then makes use of bio waste so the bio waste that is there at home the waste the animal waste the human waste the vegetables waste all that the waste is there at the home and in the atmosphere from the house we can go and deposit in the tank and that will later turn 
will get a decompose and form into energy and the disadvantage is using this biogas is causing a greenhouse effect so it is polluting it causes lot of heat it releases lot of heat into the atmosphere therefore it is causing green effect that is another that is the only disadvantage of this biogas then another non conventional source of energy is geothermal energy you know what is the meaning of thermal thermal means heat it is coming from the heat the heat energy so clean eco friendly and always available so one of the advantages of this um, this source of energy is it is very clean and it is always available it is very eco friendly it is not causing pollution or anything then the disadvantage is located far away from cities and so costly to transport the electricity so this plant where this um, geothermal energy is produced or electricity is produced it is far away from the city it is produced somewhere far away in the villages in the far away area and so to you know, produce electricity electricity there in the far away place and bringing to the town or transport it to the town it is very difficult very expensive that is only problem that they are facing to bring after producing to bring it to the town to supply to the people to the factory to the houses and so on, it becomes very difficult otherwise it is quite good and people will be happy to use it <coughs> so that is in nutshell in short now let us see another source that is wind energy wind energy wind is an inexhaustible source of energy it is inexhaustible will not get over wind mills have been used for grinding grain and lifting water since time immemorial so this wind energy has been used for grinding grain or after mill after harvesting we need to mill the paddy grind so the wind energy was used for that even from time immemorial all the times even our great great grandfathers even their time they were using wind mill for cleaning and so on in modern time wind mills the high speed winds rotate the wind mill which is connected to a generator to produce electricity so in modern times people produce wind energy wind energy by setting a wind mill and it will be able to run high speed depending on the speed of the wind and then it is connected to the generator and it will produce the electricity and wind farms having clusters of such wind mills are located in coastal regions and in mountain passes where strong and steady winds blow so when we set up the wind mill to produce electricity we have to make sure that we set up this machine where there is steady passage of the wind some areas of the earth has got very strong wind always maybe certain mountain ways or maybe near the seashore and so on. where there is strong wind passage is there we set up the wind mill if you go and set up a place where there is no wind at all then it will be a waste of money and there will be no able, able to produce electricity so we need strong wind and we have set up the machine in that region where there is strong wind and <coughs> and wind farms are found in netherlands germany denmark uk usa and spain are noted for their wind energy production so many countries are shifting to wind mills they produce electricity from the wind so which are the countries leading countries in producing of wind energy they are netherlands germany denmark uk usa and Spain. These are the countries that are leading in production of electricity from wind. Now let us see about next one, nuclear power.
न्यूक्लियर पावर न्यूक्लियर पावर इज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम एनर्जी स्टोर इन द न्यूक्लिय of atoms of naturally occurring radioactive elements like uranium and thorium so we said nuclear energy is power is plenty we get plenty of power energy but it is very expensive and so how do we get we get it by occurring radioactive elements like uranium and thorium so these are the elements that are used for obtaining power from nuclear power so these fuels undergo nuclear fusion fission in nuclear reactors and emit power so these elements like thorium and uranium they are put in the um, nuclear power stations and they are made to undergo fission yeah divided force then that is then lot of energy is emitted so it is a chemical fact and through that factor or through that action lot of energy is emitted energy comes out but to break that we need to spend lot of energy also and the greatest producers of nuclear power are usa and europe so these are the technology that is used in bomb and zone so when it is broken suddenly it is producing lot of energy thousands of people can die if it is thrown into a tower in a crowded city and so so the same technology is used in other bomb and other missile all that so when it go and fall in certain place the thorium or the uranium that is kept inside it breaks and produces lot of energy which can kill people can destroy houses and other things and so on. so that is a technology so it can be used for good purpose and also can be used for bad purpose and in india rajasthan and jharkhand have large deposits of uranium so in india we have two states rajasthan and jharkhand they have got large deposits of uranium which can be used for producing electricity and thorium is found in large quantities in the monocyte sands of kerala so thorium also is found in the monocyte in the sands inside the sands that are found in kerala the nuclear power stations in india are located at kalpakam in tamil nadu tarapur in maharashtra Rana Pradhan Sagar near Kota in Rajasthan and Narora in Uttar Pradesh and Kaiga in Karnataka so these are the nuclear power stations in India how many are there Kalpakam in Tamil Nadu Tarapur in Maharashtra Rana Pradhan Sagar near Kota in Rajasthan Narora in Uttar Pradesh and Kaiga in Karnataka so we have five nuclear power stations are there where we are able to generate electricity from the elements called thorium and uranium so we have got deposits of uranium and thorium in india and using them we are able to produce electricity we are able to generate power so in the previous page you will find page 34 you will find eh, do you know it is knowledge general knowledge is there the site of the world's first solar and wind powered bus shelter in its scotland so scotland was the first country they started running bus using the solar power and the wind power they started running the bus that was in scotland so sometimes they last which country or which is the first country running bus with the power of solar and wind so what is the answer scotland then there is an activity for you to cook rice solar cooker so you can try that one in your own homes these days quarantine or lockdown therefore as you are sitting at home simply try to practice this method for cooking rice and see how successful you are okay and you can share me your experiences 
how did you manage, was it successful, whether the rice was cooked properly or not, whether it was tasty or not, all that you can tell me. Okay. Now we go to next form of energy, that is geothermal energy. <coughs> geothermal energy. Heat energy obtained from the earth is called geothermal energy. You can underline. What is the meaning of geothermal energy? Heat obtained by obtained from the earth is called geothermal energy. So in the previous class I said under the earth it is so hot, the temperature is very high. That's why the trees and the animals that went under the earth millions of years ago, due to that heat they are turning into fuel, turning into petroleum products. So under the earth there is a lot of heat is there, a lot of energy is there. So the temperature in the interior of the earth rises steadily as we go deeper. So if we go deeper and deeper into the earth, the more deeper you go, the temperature is increasing, becoming higher and higher. And sometimes this Heat energy may surface itself in the form of hot springs. So that is the reason some places we can see the hot water is coming out from under the earth. There is a place in Assam called Garampani. There is a spring and always hot water is coming out. So that place is called Garampani. It is near Assam and Meghalaya side. So that is because under the earth it is so hot. So water is passing through that hot temperature area and the water also becomes hot it is boiling inside and the more it is coming out as a hot water so many people used to come and take water from there they take bath in that hot water and some of them get and if they have skin disease and so it gets hot right heal and so on so it is because of under the earth temperature is very high and it is even able to make the water hot And sometimes this heat energy may surface itself in the form of hot springs. And this heat energy can be used to generate power. Geothermal energy in the form of hot springs has been used for cooking, heating and bathing for several for several years. So this heat energy from inside the earth have been used for several years for many purposes at home. What are the purposes? We use it for cooking, heating, bathing and so on. So for common people have been using it for different purposes for many years. And USA has the world's largest geothermal power plants followed by New Zealand, Iceland, Philippines and Central America. So you can underline which country is the leading country in the use of geothermal energy. This country? USA. USA is a leading country. Then other countries like New Zealand, Iceland, Philippines, Central America and so they are also using quite a lot to produce this geothermal energy. In India, geothermal plants are located in Manikharan in Himachal Pradesh and Puga Valley in Ladakh. So in India, we are not so much advanced, we are not able to use much, but it's still in two places in India, like Himachal Pradesh in the Manikharan, that is a place name, then Puga in Puga Valley in Ladakh. These are the two, only two places where we are using the geothermal energy. Then another source of energy is called tidal energy. Tidal energy. As I said earlier, tidal means that in the sea there is high, high tide and low tide. So 
when the high tide it is all because of the gravitational force of the earth so sometimes water rises high sometimes the water goes down so in that movement of the water are going up and down also we can make use to generate electricity so energy generated from tides is called tidal energy tidal energy can be harnessed by building dams at narrow openings of the sea and during high tide the energy of the tides is used to turn the turbine installed in the dam to produce electricity and russia france and gulf cuts in india have huge tidal mill farms so you can see the machines are installed there when the high tide is there water level will come up and water will go inside so then this turbines will start running because of the flow of the water and when the low tide comes water will come out and again this tide will come start rolling because of the force of the water flowing water so in that way they are able to generate electricity it is somewhat like the uh, hydroelectric power there also the dynamo is made to run by water rolling down from the dam to the blades so here the dam is not required the water is naturally going up and going down so they can set it up and make electricity from there then another one is biogas so we already said about biogas that one is that it is very useful we can put all our waste in that biogas but one problem is that it is causing green effect it is increasing the heat of the atmosphere it is um, polluting the atmosphere only that is the problem so organic waste such as dead plant and animal material animal dung and kitchen waste can be converted into a gaseous fuel called biogas so biogas we have no expense once the this biogas we have to make a tank and few pipes are required only that is a required thing you can see here a tank and few pipes are required and we will be putting all the waste inside the animal waste the human waste the vegetable waste home waste kitchen waste everything will be deposited there it will go inside this tank and it will get fermented and it will start forming the gas and the gas will come out through this place this pipe that is on top it will come out then we can connect that one to the kitchen for cooking food and so on so that is very easy for the people to follow and the organic waste is decomposed by bacteria in biogas digesters to emit biogas which is essentially a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide so you can underline this biogas is a mixture of two gases what are they methane and carbon dioxide that's why it is causing greenhouse effect it is producing carbon dioxide also so biogas is an excellent fuel for cooking and lighting lighting and produce huge amount of organic manure each year so apart from producing electricity it is also producing organic manure so when this tank is full with manure what we are depositing every day it will get composed and it will come out through this way so it come out through this way so we can take it out and use in the garden for as a manure so that the plants will grow very well so it is a very fantastic organic manure instead of using chemical fertilizers we can use this manure what is coming out from this biogas and that is a very good manure for our plants it will be uh, healthy for the people as well to eat the fruits and vegetables and energy is everywhere but we can see that harnessing this energy is more difficult as well as costly so we said about so many types of non conventional forms of energy and so all around energy is there but what we need is we need to use it we need to harness we need to collect it that becomes difficult for us and it is also costly sometimes and each one of us can make a different difference by not wasting energy therefore if you are not able to produce energy at least one thing we can do we shall not waste our energy maybe by 
putting off the light when we don't need or putting off the other electrical things when we are not using it or when we cook we can cover the pot so that the steam will not escape the food will be cooked faster and less energy is used so these are the small small things that we can do in our home so that we will save the energy and each one of us can make a difference by not wasting energy energy saved is energy generated so if you are able to save one unit of energy we can say i have generated one unit of energy so what you have saved is same as what you are generating so wastage is not advised and act now and make brighter energy for future so if you want make your so what we are saying is the energy saved is same as energy generated so even if we cannot um, garner energy from the atmosphere we cannot produce energy from the atmosphere at least make sure that you do not waste the energy you can save it and keep it and that will be good and so if you want to have a bright future what you need to do is start saving energy now don't waste it then you will not regret in the future there has been lavishly spent it and waste the energy and the future generation is going to suffer let us not make our future generation suffer or let us do something good for them let us save the energy and help the people that is coming ahead, coming ahead or coming going to come in the future so that is about that, and that is the end of this lesson so i hope we have learned a lot about the minerals that are there in this in this earth and the power resources that are there on this earth and so everything we need to preserve it so that we can live our life comfortably not only this present age but the future generations also will be able to live successfully so that is the end of this lesson and i hope you understood and study nicely read nicely and make it thorough in your knowledge now take the exercises in your textbook page 37 if you fill in the blanks or tick the correct answers as we we shall do it now so exercise number 2 tick the correct answer which one of the following is not a characteristic of minerals which one is not a characteristic so four are given there and the answer correct one is number c they are inexhaustible then second one which one of the following is not a producer of mica so four can four states names are there which one is not producing mica number b karnataka karnataka is not producing mica then number 3 Which one of the following is the leading producer of copper in the world? So, which country is the leading producer of copper in the world? What is it? Chile. Number C. Chile is the leading producer of copper. Then number four. Which one of the following practices will not conserve LPG in your kitchen? So, which one of the following practices will not conserve LPG in your kitchen? which is answer number 4 d cooking food in an open pan kept in low flame so if you cook in a food in cook in a container that is very open cannot be covered and put the flame very less then it will be simply wasting the energy it will take long time to get cooked and it will be wasting energy so that is the answer So the balance we will see afterwards. I will send you notes, but make sure that you write down. Otherwise, you are simply receiving it and keeping it there. So it will be late and it will be overburdened for you. So study your lessons daily and do well in your studies. Okay. Thank you for listening. Bye.